Well, it's a blessing uh, to be able to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. It's a blessing to be able to get up and move around. There's a lot that are not able to do that. So I thought about what to do for tonight. Brother Stephen asked me <clears throat> a week and a half, two weeks ago or something. They found out they were going down to Perry to uh, see the uh, handbell choir down there that's supposed to be the best around. So they all went down there for that. And I was thinking about with the new year and with, with, with that being uh, the case, uh, and I thought about the fact that what, we, what should we be doing as God's children uh, with the new year uh, that has come and so forth. And I found this passage, and I looked at it, and I think that it talks really about the job description of the children of God. And we're going to look at 1 Timothy 4, 13 through 16 in a moment. And I hope you don't mind me sitting down. That's what I used to do was sit right here at 2 o'clock and sit right here at 6.30. I can still see you good, and hopefully you can still see me good. Uh, you know, job descriptions can be tricky. Uh, you, you, you go to a new job, and they give you a job description. You see everything that's there, and you're there for two weeks, three weeks, and you realize they're giving you a lot of things that, that weren't on the job description. Uh, but everyone that goes to a new job needs to have a job description. You need to know what's expected of you. You need to know how you're going to be able to, to carry that out. Now, in the body of Christ, uh, job descriptions are not just what the job description says because we should do for God what he has done for us, and he's done everything for us, anything we might even could imagine, and so we ought to be doing the same things. Matter of fact, the, the end of most job descriptions in the church says other duties as assigned by the pastor. And the first time I was uh, uh, working under a pastor, I asked him, Is that, does that include yard work and all for the pastor? And they said, well, no. I said, okay, I, just, I was just wondering. I guess I could do it if I needed to, but I was just wondering. So we need, as a job description, an outline of what's expected because we, we need to know the things that's expected. We need to know how we're going to be able to do the job in order uh, to get there. Uh, Mark 10.45, I've mentioned to you many times before, is a verse that I try to live by every day. I'm not going to tell you I always do it exactly the way it should be done. But Jesus said, I didn't come to be served, but to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. And I believe with all my heart that's what we should be doing as God's children, giving our lives uh, to other people and doing the service that other people uh, need. Our verses tonight is a situation where Paul is writing to young Timothy, and he is telling him the things that he needs to be doing uh, in the church, in the body of Christ, so that everything will go well. And there's a couple of things before we get all the way into it I want to mention. Th these verses and many other places in Scripture teach us who we are to be as children of God. Christ-likeness, doing the things that Christ did, the, the fruit of the Spirit, all the things that was there. And secondly, after we know who we are to be and we become that, then we are to be examples to the people around us so that they can become who God wants them to be. Remember, Paul had left, uh, uh, was writing to Timothy, and he had uh, had Timothy there. He had left him uh, in Ephesus, and some issues had arisen, and Paul was trying to help guide him so that he would know what to do and how he could lead the people that were there. So I want us to look at the verses first, and then I want us to look at a few things about this. 1 Timothy 4, 13 through 16. And these verses read like this. Till I come, give attention to reading, exhortation, and doctrine. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the eldership. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them that your progress may be evident to all. Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine or the things that we believe, the things that they believe. Continue in them, for in doing this you will save both yourself and those who hear you. 
Uh, the key in this passage is found in verse 15, that your progress may be evident to all. That word progress is a military term, and it was used of the military, probably special forces more than anyone else, that would go before everyone else and clear the way and, and, and move any obstacles that might have been there so that everyone else could then come in. So when we talk about it in a spiritual sense, we're talking about the children of God, the people of God that go before us, of course, our pastors, our leaders, uh, all the people that are there, and the, the mature Christians that go before other people and become who God wants them to become so that they then can be an example for the people that come behind them. And, you know, we, our, lives, our lives have to be patterned after what the Bible says Jesus' life was, but we all pretty well know godly people that we can pattern our lives after if they're patterning their lives after Jesus Christ. And Paul said that in, in, on a couple of occasions. He said, imitate me as I have imitated Christ. So we go before other people and the more spiritually mature Christians come to a situation where we are there and we are progressing, like these verses said. We're moving out in front of everyone else and a lot of times moving the obstacles that are there so that others can come and become who God uh, wants them to be. So in our teaching, our preaching, our living, our, our, our leading, all of these things, we ought to be an example to those that come uh, behind us. People don't want to go in any way where someone else has not already been. Amen? It's easy, it's easy to get someone to follow, but a lot of times it's difficult to get someone to lead. They want someone else to go before them, and that's what this is talking about. Those in Christ that go before other people and prepare the way so that we can be examples of other people. All right, four specific things that I, I think are in these verses uh, about this job description that Paul talks about uh, here. The first one is this, absorbed, be absorbed in God's word. Our verse is said in verse 13, give attention to, which means be totally absorbed in something. Uh, so he says, allow these things to totally consume your life. What things is he talking about? He lists three things. The first one is reading. Back then, they were pretty much expected to read the Bible and know the Bible, uh, the, the Old Testament scriptures, the Jewish people were, and not only to read them, and not only to know them, but to live them out. And, you know, James says pretty much the same thing. James says, you know, uh, you don't just hear the word, you do the word. You, you hear what it is, you place it in your heart, you learn from it, your life should reflect what it is, and then you live it out. So they were expected to do that, read it. It's extremely important. If we don't read what's in the Bible, how are we going to know what to do as God's people? Amen? People, people ask me many, have asked me many times, how do I know what God is like? I say, read the New Testament. Jesus was here. He said, uh, he said if, if you believe in God, believe in me. My Father and I are one. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So we look at the New Testament. We look at the things that Jesus did, and we follow those, and we know then uh, how God is, who God is, and how we are to pattern our lives after that. Secondly, he talked about exhortation, which literally means encouragement. So we read the Bible, we study the Bible, we know the Bible, we apply the Bible to our lives, we live it out every day, and it gives encouragement to other people. We had testimonies a while ago. Nancy wasn't feeling good at the beginning of the week. She is now. There may be someone here now that's not feeling too good. She gives encouragement to them that hopefully in a day or two they'll feel better. Uh, other things, we have some with their, their family has started into, in church. That gives us encouragement. 
that some of the people, maybe family, maybe friends, maybe co-workers that we are praying for, they might begin their journey with Christ. So we read it, we explain it, and then apply it to our lives, and this can give an encouragement to the people around us. Third thing is doctrine. What we believe, it means teaching. Uh, one of the main themes of Paul is doctrinal beliefs. Every uh, writing, every letter that he writes, the first half of it, almost without fail, is going to talk about the things that we believe. And then the last half of it is going to talk about how we live that out. If he's talking about the love of God in the first half, the last half he's going to be talking about how do we live out the love of God in our lives. If he's talking about forgiveness first half, how are we going to live out the forgiveness that he wants us to have? So it's one of, it's one of his main themes in his writings. So the first thing Paul gives us in the job description is that we are to be completely absorbed in God's Word. We read it, we study it, we know it, and then we apply it to our lives and live it out. Second thing is this, using God's gracious gift. 1 Timothy 4.14, we read a few moments ago, do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the with the laying on the, of the hands of the eldership. Uh, the gift there uh, is a grace gift. It's something that's graciously given to us by God. Every person, the Bible says, that is a child of God has what? The Holy Spirit as a gift living in them. If you... If you have the Spirit in you, you belong to God. If you don't have the Spirit within you, then you don't belong to God. These are grace gifts. They're given to us uh, uh, graciously by God. Uh, we have at least one fruits of the Spirit, that, 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 that uh, gifts of the Spirit that God gives to us, and it's given by the grace of God. When God calls us to a task, if he calls you to do something, if he calls you to teach a certain class, it may be children, uh, it may be youth, uh, it, it may be adults, uh, if God calls you to do something else, he's going to always graciously give you all the gifts you need to be able to carry that out. If you had never ever imagined yourself going to another country to be a missionary but all of a sudden the Holy Spirit touched your life and you understand that there are people in a certain maybe you feel called to a certain area of the world but you, you, you talk to yourself and, and you think I don't, I, don't, uh, I don't think there's any way <laughs> that I can go there God is, if he calls you to do that, he's going to give you the gifts that you need in order to carry it out. Amen? Uh, I, I've told you all before, on a Sunday morning, uh, someone came to me and said, Brother Phil, what, how would you like to go to Africa and build a church? I said, not at all. <laughs> I ain't lost anything over there. And I'm not going over there. Well, the Holy Spirit touched me. And I said, well, I got some good friends. You know, I'll, I'll drag them with me if, if, if we'll go. So I asked my friend, my good friend, uh, I knew he knew all about building because we, we were going to be in the jungle, you know, building a church. I said, Dave, how would you like to go to Africa and build a church? Dave said, have you lost your mind? I said, no, I just, there's a group from, from Macon here, from the Macon Baptist Association, going over there to build a church. You know how, you know how to build something? Uh, I, I, no, I, I don't think so. Well, that night he comes back to church and he said, you and I and Jack are going to Africa to build a church. And I got, uh, it was going to cost us like $1,800 a piece to go. He said, I'm going to give $5,000. That'll cover me, you and Jack, and give us a couple of hundred dollars left. I said, are you serious? He said, yeah, I'm serious. He, you, you said you wanted to go. I said, no, I didn't say I wanted to go. I said, 
I asking you, did you want us to go? Well, I'll be honest with you, I never imagined, never imagined to be able to do anything like that. But it did fine. And when we got back, the church then wanted to do something. Our church did, and we went to Panama and built a church. So if God leads you by the leading of the Holy Spirit to do something, to go somewhere, to do whatever, he's going to give you what you need in order to take care of it. It may be money. It may be p friends with you. It may be the, 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 the guiding of the Holy Spirit, whatever it might be. He's going to give you what you need. Uh, God gives us spiritual gifts to be able to do the things that he wants us to do. 1 Corinthians 15, 9 through 10 says this, For I am, Paul said, For I am the least of the apostles who am not worthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But, he says, by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. So Paul said, I was nothing, and, and I was persecuting the church. And I shouldn't even be allowed to be called an apostle, but by the grace of God, he called me to do this, and it wasn't in vain. What he's saying is, I thought there's no way. But God said yes, and it worked out good, only because of the grace of God. So our job description so far, we have to be totally absorbed in the Word of God, and we have to be using the gift or the gifts that God has given us. Third, give yourself totally to Christ's likeness. Paul said in our verses in, in 1 Timothy 4.15, Meditate on these things, give yourself entirely to them, that your progress may be evident to all people. Meditate has the idea of being in them or giving yourself totally to something. What he's talking about is everything that we do. Now, I know every thought that you have can't, be on spiritual things but you need to have your mind set by your bible study your prayer life uh to the point that you're open always to the spiritual things that god wants to bring to you and that's what i think he's talking about here uh what should be the goal of every christian it should be christ likeness we we're saved by the grace of god we're continually being sanctified, the Bible says, we're continually being discipled to become who God wants us uh, to be. And we should always remember that. We call ourselves Christians. That means little Christ. So if you're a little Christ, you know, you've had people to tell you, I guess. Uh, I, have, I have people periodically say, you know, you look like your daddy. I said, good. Good. I, I, I suppose I look like my daddy. I won't want to be looking like somebody else. If we, if we call ourselves Christians, we're saying that we're little Christ. And if we're little Christ, then we should act like it. Amen? And we should be doing the things. And, and the, the number one thing in our life should be to be like Christ. Jesus said no person can serve two masters. Uh, Paul said this in Romans 8, 29. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Paul said this at Philippi. This one thing, he said, I do. He talked about all the accomplishments he thought he had done, but he was doing them in vain. And he said, but this one thing I do, forgetting all that, throwing all of that away, this one thing I do, I seek Christ likeness. I seek to be like the Lord Jesus Christ is what he was talking about. Uh, James said a double-minded person is unstable in all their ways. So our job description so far is this. Be totally absorbed in God's word. Read it. Know it. Live it out. Use God's grace gift to you for whatever he calls you to do and then uh, strive for that one thing Christ likeness. And the last thing is this. Pay close attention to self. Pay close attention to self. Uh, 
A verse that said this in 1 Timothy 4, 16. Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine, the teachings. Continue in them, for in doing this you will save both yourself and those who hear you. This is taking spiritual inventory. Now, as human beings, we like to, I'm trying to think of a good way to say this, we like to throw blame on someone else. Amen? Because if someone else is at fault, then everybody's focusing on that and they leave us alone. You know, it's easier to throw stones than it is to catch stones that are thrown at you. It's easier to have the focus on someone else than on yourself. But every day we should take a spiritual inventory of ourselves, especially, especially when we're tempted to start talking bad about someone else. It's easy to do because I, I used to say to people, children always want to throw the blame on someone else. You know, you, you, you catch somebody. Uh, I know uh, Jamie one time and his cousin was outside and, and they was having a rock battle. I didn't know it, but they was having a rock battle. Nothing I would have ever done when I was young. And Jamie's hair was blonde. And uh, he comes in the house with blood all down through here. And he says, Chuck hit me in the head with a rock. Chuck said, I just threw it up in the air and he run under it. <laughs> That's the way we do. We want to blame somebody else. And, and it's, it, it's, we know that it's that way because it was that way with Adam and Eve, wasn't it? So it's been that way since the beginning. But we ought to take spiritual inventory of our own selves every day. Ask God in the morning, Lord, lead me to be someone that does good today and not someone that talks bad about someone else. We don't want to get bogged down. We don't want to just go through the motions. We need to look for new ways, new ideas to bring forth the Word of God. We can get so busy, so busy, that we forget that we are to be striving to be like Christ every moment of every day. Uh, Acts 20, 28 says this, Therefore take heed or hold fast to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. Now, that is first and foremost to pastors, to leaders of the church. Examine yourselves every day. If you're going to lead people, you got to you got to make sure that there's not even uh, the resemblance of any evil in your life. Not that we're perfect. Don't hear me saying that. That comes down to your more mature Christians then. There's people watching you every day. People are watching you. They may be little children. They may be adults. But they're watching you. And, and, and they're seeing how you pattern your life. And, and as, as children of God, we have to keep ourselves as spotless, as spotless as we can. 1 Corinthians 10, 12. Therefore let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. Always remember how much God has done for you. Amen? We need to always remember how much God has done for us. And then it's easier for us to overlook the faults of others and maybe not throw those stones. Uh, I started with this verse, and I want to finish with this verse. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Every day we ought to live that out as much as we can. Are we going to make mistakes? Absolutely. But we ought to, as much as we can, live our lives so that we reflect the life of Jesus. We are being transformed into the image of Jesus Christ. And as we move through life, we'll never ever be perfect until we go and be with Him and we receive that glorified body. And praise the Lord, we will be free from even... Uh, uh, even the presence of sin anywhere around us then, okay? Father, we love you and we thank you so much for loving us.
We thank you for the blessings of life that you give us. We thank you for your word that we can take and use and evaluate as we have tonight. We thank you for these verses that lead us to the point that we know how we can become more and more like Jesus every day. And I thank you for it. We pray, Father, that you always lead in every way. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen and amen.